Throughout the ages, architects and engineers have designed and built the great structures that have made our world and withstood the test of time. Hi, I'm Ed Asner. Welcome to Architects and Engineers. Let's look now at modern steel frame buildings. This is the Empire State Building, a marvel of modern architecture. It was built to last. Architects and engineers of today use computers to design and engineer buildings that will endure the forces of nature, such as earthquakes, fires, and hurricanes. This modern skyscraper was also built to last. We've seen buildings completely destroyed like this before, but only when done intentionally. Danny Joenko is the expert on this in Europe. What did he say? This is controlled demolition. Zeker weten. Zeker weten. Er is nagesprongen. Dit is in opdracht gebeurd. Het heeft een team gedaan van experts. Let's compare. Explosives are used to demolish buildings like this in just seconds. Okay, so it's a controlled demolition. What's the problem with that? Well, it happened on the afternoon of 9-11 at the World Trade Center. Let's just think about this. Controlled demolitions cannot be engineered and rigged in a day. It takes months. And therefore, this event must have been planned in advance. We are walking back. It's a building about to blow up. Did they actually use the word brought down? And who was it that was telling you this? In the fire department. And um, they did use the word, we're going to have to bring it down. And these people heard explosions. We heard this, this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. It looked like there was um, a shock wave uh, ripping through the building and the windows all uh, busted out. About a second later, the bottom floor caves out. The building followed after that. He takes his hand off and you hear three, two, one, and it was boom, 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 boom. And these reporters recognized it as a controlled demolition. And I turned in time to see uh, what looked like uh, a skyscraper implosion. It looked like it had been done by a demolition crew. The whole thing just collapsing down on itself. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. So what's the problem if this was a planned demolition? Well, we are told by government agencies that this building came down as a result of normal office fires. The National Institute of Standards and Technology produced their final report in 2008. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. Well, what do you think brought down the building? And what caught my eye is more than 1,300 architects and engineers examined the evidence about Building 7's collapse and disagree with the official report issued by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. I certainly am much more open-minded about it than I was, and it is because of the involvement of the 9-11 families and all these engineers and architects. You are about to hear from architect of 23 years, Richard Gage, AIA, member of the American Institute of Architects and founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Now there are more than 1,500 architects and engineers who say that it could not have been brought down by office fires. They are backed by 9-11 family members who are calling for an independent, unbiased investigation. I'm Richard Gage. Fires have never before caused the collapse of any skyscraper. 
even though there are numerous examples of much hotter, larger, and longer lasting fires in these buildings. And in the case of Building 7, the fire that NIST said started the collapse had actually burned out over an hour before. It could not have caused the collapse, as NIST claims. Yet this 47-story modern steel frame skyscraper, which was not hit by an airplane, collapses mostly into its own footprint like a house of cards, as fast as a bowling ball falling off the side of the building in just under seven seconds. Listen to the experts. Building number seven uh, descended in free fall for the first 100 feet, which means that there was absolutely no resistance to the descent whatsoever. NIST has admitted it went into free fall for eight stories. And going from motionless to free fall instantly, that's a bothersome part of the puzzle because NIST never explained it. We've got a building that came down in its own footprint, so all of the columns really needed to be severed at the same time in order for that structure to fall the way that we saw. The symmetry is the smoking gun. The whole building completely comes down in one continuous motion. There couldn't have been any structural resistance. According to NIST, the failure occurred at column 79 on level 12. They're talking about a single columnar collapse or failure that resulted in a total collapse of the building. It is possible that you could have a, a local failure as a, as a result of a, fa a connection failing. But the likelihood of the, that failure dragging the entire building in such a fashion that all the columns would fail at the same time is an impossibility. Impossibility? Yes. What I saw, it was a classic implosion. The center of the core, the penthouse area, starts to move first, and then the building follows along with it. I'd like to know why NIST excluded the document uh, from FEMA in Appendix C that documented the evidence of melting steel. Why is this forensic evidence not being included in the report? In an office fire, you cannot generate enough heat to melt steel. And yet we have evidence of molten iron. RJ Lee Company, USGS, and Dr. Stephen Jones's work, all three separately found these microspheres. In the dust, we found what we characterize as unreacted thermitic material in the shape of some very tiny red-gray chips, which have different properties. And uh, in the reaction, they produce molten iron, which is the prime indication of a thermitic reaction. And such a reaction can be used to destroy steel structures. What we have found is a modern version of thermite, which we call nanothermite. There were these iron microspheres present in all of the dust samples that needed to have been formed in extremely high temperatures. I've independently seen thermitic activity within two separate independent samples of World Trade Center dust. My contention based on finding thermite residue in the dust is that it happened before. It didn't happen after in the, in the fires that ensued in the rubble pile afterwards. All the characteristics of the microspheres tell me that thermite was involved in melting those steel beams. So thermite, if it was present at the World Trade Center and created this molten metal that the, so many witnesses and photographic evidence shows, would also explain the fact that the fires could not be put out at ground zero. The only thing that uh, is consistent with all of the evidence that we have that could cause such a thing is the use of thermite to cut through the steel. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like lava. Like, like, like lava. lava. Like a volcano. Well, the manual gets into thermite, and if it says if you have melted steel or concrete, 
which we had on 9-11. We should test for it. It's this fused element of steel, mo molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. We're asking for an investigation that follows national standards. There's no excuse to not test for this. If terrorists use explosives 93, why didn't we test for them? If all these witnesses heard explosions, why aren't we testing for them? NIST concedes that they found no evidence for explosives. So then we asked them, well, did you look? And they said, no, we did not look for explosives <laughs> or residues of explosives. So the preconceived notion of NIST is that there's no evidence for explosives and so there's no point in looking. Uh, that is the most unscientific thing that you can possibly think of, not to look because you don't expect to find evidence, and in fact the evidence is overwhelming. They state these conclusions for which there's virtually no evidence, and then they ignore conclusions that can be drawn from the evidence. The Freedom of Information Act request to NIST was denied with the claim that releasing this data might jeopardize public safety. How could it possibly jeopardize public safety? The destruction of evidence was a criminal act in itself. It was already being carted away and destroyed when the FEMA investigators got there about a month after September 11th. You can't do science when you are deprived of the evidence and when your hypothesis is the least valid instead of the most likely. And the most likely hypothesis in, in the case of Building 7 wasn't even mentioned. This is not science. The scientific forensic evidence ignored by NIST, but carefully reviewed by teams of technical professionals, corroborates the hypothesis of explosive controlled demolition. We've traveled to 21 foreign countries and 32 American cities bringing this evidence to the attention of the public. And we're backed by 9-11 family members and other concerned citizens who are calling for an independent, unbiased investigation. I'm a family member trying to find out the answers to the murder of 3,000 plus people. The bottom line is that it needs to be investigated properly. Please look at architects and engineers People all around the world, scientists all around the world are questioning this. And there's some deep, deep explaining to do. It took some kind of consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. As an engineer, and I have three degrees in engineering, I signed that petition for architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth some time ago because the American people absolutely need the truth of 9-11. Look at the evidence. In fact, I'll say this very categorically. Any reasonable person who looks at the evidence that's been brought forward has got to come away with the feeling that something has to be done, a real investigation has to be put forward. We will never heal. This country will never, ever, ever forget that day. We have to demand a new investigation. I want justice here. The country owns this. We were all victims. You all should want answers. It's not just ours, not just mine. We all lost something that day. It's distressing for everyone to come to terms with this evidence. But we must pursue the truth wherever it leads. Look at the evidence and decide for yourself.